Palo X News Weekend. Coming up tonight, Mike Bird's attorney responds to a motion calling for the sheriff's bond to be revoked. And classic cars were on display in Bay St. Louis to raise money for children in need. Good evening. Thanks for joining us. I'm Christina Garcia. We'll have more on those stories in a moment. But first tonight, the Wiggins Police Department has relocated due to leaks in their ceiling. It's been a problem for a while, and that issue came to a head yesterday. Hannah Mosley joins us in the studio with more on tonight's top story. Okay. After employees reported mysterious sicknesses believed to be caused by the leaks, police chief Matt Barnett decided it was time to do something about this longtime issue. And while the department is working to fix this problem, the chief says the safety of the public is still a priority. If you look in here, you can see where it's just melting down this wall. This wall is full of water and it's streaking down the wall. Wiggins police chief frustrated with ceilings that have been leaking for months. Four of the five of the tile that were in here, we had to completely tear out, take out. They just fell apart. They were getting so wet. Walking through the police headquarters. A lot of these tiles we've replaced in the last week. And on Friday, they had enough moving the employees into new locations. We've moved our dispatchers to the county 911 building and the police is going to move to the uh, senior center. Mayor Joel Miles says the building with a flat roof was built in the 1950s. While there's been renovations, there hasn't been solutions. Water's running down in there. It looks like a big hole there. But there's a lot of tar and cool seal and that kind of stuff. Now Chief Barnett says an expert will come decide the condition of the building Monday and then city leaders will decide the next step. We're going to address it and do what we have to do to keep our folks safe and the public safe. The department has applied for a grant. By middle October we'll know if we've qualified for that grant. If not then we're just going to have to to seek other ways to put a roof on it. No matter what, if it's just a roof going on this building, you're looking at six months. While they're in new headquarters for a while, safety still comes first. We're still patrolling. We still have our investigators on call and available to come out. Until the issue is resolved, patience is key. We're just going to have to pull together and work as a team under these certain conditions right now until we can get this resolved. Now, Chief Barnett says if the roof is the only thing that needs to be repaired, it should take about six months before they move back in. Christina. Thanks, Hannah. This week, embattled Jackson County Sheriff Mike Bird's attorney filed papers in response to a DA motion that his bond should be revoked. The sheriff is facing 31 charges, including embezzlement and extortion. On Wednesday, the district attorney requested his bond be revoked, accusing the sheriff of intimidating witnesses, specifically three deputies who testified before a grand jury. According to Bird's attorney, he did contact the three, but it wasn't to intimidate them. It was just to collect facts on the case. His attorney also said that the DA is making the motion public and it has jeopardized his client's ability to get an impartial jury in Jackson County. A judge could decide on whether to revoke Sheriff Bird's bond as early as next week. Turning to weather, Joel's been keeping an eye on the tropics and Hurricane Ingrid and he joins us now with the latest Still keeping an eye on Ingrid, still churning down there, just moving out of the Bay of Campeche into the western Gulf of Mexico. Still a Category 1 storm, but a weak Category 1 right now with winds at about 75 miles per hour. Moving to the north-northwest now at about 7 miles per hour. You can see it here, still churning there, and there have been some changes in the forecast. I'll have that up here in just a few moments today. Topped out at only 89 degrees, but it certainly felt a little bit better than it has because of the cooler temperatures and the drier air. So we're not dealing with the humidity like we have been over the past few days. Check out Memphis only topped out at about 78 degrees today. Definitely much nicer than it has been. Here's a look at our WLX 24 seven radar just showing some uh, false returns here on the mobile radar. But other than that, seeing clear skies out there across South Mississippi and temperatures tonight will drop down into the upper 60s in many location 69 is what we're expecting. Then it looks like tomorrow we'll see lots of sunshine, of course, warming up to about 88 degrees. So not as humid. Of course, we will have an update on the tropics coming up here in a few moments. Thanks, Joel. A special service was held at Keesler Air Force Base today. Colonel Frank Amadeo assumed command of the 403rd Wing. They had an interim commander for the past three years. He was honored for his hard work and dedication since 2010 when the previous colonel went to work at the Pentagon. The colonel came to the coast by way of Illinois and tells WLOX he is excited to be here in South Mississippi. 
I am very excited to be here. It is an honor to actually be part of this wing. This is a phenomenal C-130 Total Force Integrated Wing. And to be part of the uh, Gulf Coast now, my wife and I couldn't be happier to be here. The 403rd Wing is also known for their hurricane hunting efforts, which the new Colonel is happy to be a part of. Up in the state capitol, parents, young adults, and church groups came together for the first statewide conference on teen pregnancy. The event was put on by a task force formed by the governor to reduce teen pregnancy in Mississippi. In 2010, our state had the highest rate of teenagers giving birth in the country. During today's conference, attendees met in various groups to discuss ways to help young adults make wiser decisions about sex. Tonight, the city of Biloxi and several other sponsored, uh, sponsors honored the Biloxi School District for recently being ranked third in the state for academic achievement. A reception for the district's 800 employees highlighted the ranking at the Biloxi Civic Center. The Biloxi superintendent says the ranking shows the district's commitment to have high quality instruction and time on task. Biloxi First, an organization that helps raise money for teachers that have special programs, also helped sponsor the event. Well, we're a few weeks away from cruising the coast and already classic vehicles are showing up. A display of vintage vehicles was put on over in Bay St. Louis for the annual Masonic Lodge Classic Car and Bike Show. <laughs> That's the sound of Heather Snyder and her husband's 1949 Chevy pickup. She came in from Sun, Louisiana to show off their beloved vehicle and reunite with friends at the Masonic Lodge's annual classic car and bike show, which her car group, the Misfits, helped organize. We have a 1949 Chevy truck that my husband's had for 20 years, and he totally redid it, and um, he has a six-cylinder motor in it, and... Um, <laughs> Onlookers strolled through Main Street in Bay St. Louis to check out all the interesting vehicle features and paint jobs. Misfits member Donna Holland also came out to show off her 1930 Ford sedan. She says restoring vehicles opens you up to more than just the stairs. The car people, they are a group of, of friends and it's just great the way they do. They come out to help people. We all have things in common and we all, everybody gets along. It's just like a family. Snyder says events like this bring people together to talk and trade advice on restoration. <laughs> That's when she and her husband offer up tips on cool additions they put on their truck like this cypress lining the truck's bed or this horn. He has an air tank underneath and he airs them up and um, they're really loud. They're like off of an 18 wheeler. What are they called? Train horns. People don't realize how much you have invested in these cars. I mean, they some of them eighty, ninety thousand dollars. And behind the beautiful vehicles was a good cause. All the proceeds from this event are going to benefit Shriners Hospital for Children. If you didn't get a chance to check out the classic rides today, the Misfits say they are already signed up to show off their cars at Cruising the Coast, and that's October in October. The annual Biloxi Seafood Festival kicked off today on the Biloxi Town Green. Hundreds came out to get a taste of all kinds of delicious seafood dishes, as well as check out some local arts and crafts vendors. They also listened to live music. This is the 32nd annual year for the event that's organized by the Biloxi Chamber of Commerce. If you didn't get a chance to head out and taste some of the food. It's not too late. The festival continues tomorrow from 10 in the morning until 5 in the evening. Coming up, a group of motorcycle riders gathered in Wiggins to honor the lives of two young girls who died in a house fire. And a Biloxi Park is renamed for a beloved businessman as we approach the one year anniversary of his death. In high definition, exclusively by Gardner Law Firm. The lawyer to call for bankruptcy and debt counseling. A motorcycle ride was hosted in Wiggins today to raise money for the Courtney and Ashley Womack Scholarship. In 2007, the sisters were killed in a fire while staying at their grandfather's house. Their parents teamed up with the Wiggins Fire Department to host the benefit. The riders left the curb store in Wiggins and rode to the Harley Davidson store in Biloxi. Jody Hatton works with the Wiggins Fire Department and says he was more than happy to help the Womacks put on the event. I think it's really great that they're doing it to keep their memory going. Plus, it's a great opportunity for us to teach about fire safety and the dangers of fires and what can happen. Each rider paid a registration fee, and all of the money raised will go to the Courtney and Ashley Womack Scholarship Fund. 
A Biloxi Park that was a childhood field of dreams for a beloved local businessman will now forever bear his name. This morning, Bay Terrace Park on Porter Avenue was renamed Mark Bahanovich Memorial Park. A large gathering of family and friends as well as city officials were on hand as the marker bearing the late businessman's name and likeness was unveiled. Some of the crowd wore t-shirts with his USM college nickname, the White Knight, where he kicked for the Golden Eagles. With the one year anniversary of his untimely death coming up, his wife says all of this would have made Mark very proud. I know that he's smiling. I know I'm, I'm just, you know, there's no words that can say how I feel. I mean, this is a wonderful honor. Um, my kids and my grandkids are going to be able to come here and then and hopefully we'll be able to share the stories that, that, that uh, he had and what made him laugh. Bahanovich was killed in a tragic boating accident one year ago this coming Monday. Second half struggles gave Southern Miss its 15th straight loss. Highlights of that game against Arkansas are after the break. Plus, could Mississippi State hang on for a win at Auburn? We'll let you know up next in sports. We win in Ellisville. It was already a tough start for Mississippi State with that first loss against Oklahoma State. But then you get a loss like that. I mean, it, it hurts your heart. I tell you what, we have a lot of uh, sad Bulldogs fans. No kidding. Including uh, Joel. He's a little, yeah. he's a little sad. Joel, tonight. be sure to keep that uh, that happy attitude somehow, sir. <laughs> Hopefully, it will. Yeah. Stick around. Joel's got the latest on Hurricane Ingrid and an update on your forecast when WLX News Weekend returns.